<laughs> We're going to get started. Really? Yeah. Uh, because it's 9 o'clock. Feels vacant. Yes, a little quiet. Anyway, before we get started, uh, there's a fire exit right there. Uh, you can also go out this way. I used to be a, a volunteer fireman, so I'm aware of this stuff. Right there, out there, this way. Um, smoking is fine out on the property. We ask you not to smoke in the building, but you're welcome to step out. Um, How about what they smoke? Don't care. Can they vape? You're the one wearing the hippie shirt. Can they vape? <laughs> they can vape. Okay. Yes. Uh, you have to be vapist to vape. <laughs> can I finish? <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's see. Now I've lost my train of thought. Please don't take Sammy out with you. She'll follow anybody anywhere. Sam, Samantha Jane, the golden retriever. Um, let's see. Oh, if you want to use the, the restrooms, they're right there. Uh, I won't be offended if you get up and walk out. Jeff gets terribly offended, but... Uh, so you've only got a 50-50 well, chance. Well, they walk out right across the camera. That's okay. We, we've got... Got to edit them out. We've got seven hours of you on camera <laughs> today, uh, or whatever it comes out to be. Uh, there's water in the kitchen, bottled water. There's ice in the, refrigerator, in the freezer section of the refrigerator. Uh, we will be breaking for lunch. It's all the ice cream you can eat. And the most important thing is, please, ask questions. This is where people learn. Um, and don't hold off a question until I stop talking, because I never take a breath. Uh, just put your hand up, and I'll nod to you. We'll get to you uh, as fast as we can. Because your question is the same one that everybody else is thinking. Why is Jeff dressed that way? And uh, the other, uh, it, it's, an, it's a pertinent question. And so, um, you know, please put your hand up and ask questions anytime. Yes? What are those? Uh, we had a, a going away party for Connie. Um, so uh, when are those going away? Uh, this afternoon, after the class, we're having a turkey shoot. Uh, Mike and, and I are pulling out the long guns. That's the prize. No, right? we're pulling out the long guns. We're going to shoot them down. It's going to be a lot ridiculous. of fun. Ridiculous! You can't shoot a gun at the airport, but we, nobody said we couldn't do it in the building. Question: Who made them? Uh, Crystal. She unfolded them, which was. Can we get on to serious work? Sure. Okay. Um, Let's see, I think that's about everything. Oh, those of you who took Jeff's class, um, I understand, uh, you know, my, my grandfather, my other grandfather, Stephen Ulsifer, uh, do they want to hear about false teeth? I guess not. Anyway, he was working on a project at the same time a man in Sweden was. Uh, and so he always said that uh, if you think you've got a great invention, someone else is working on it at the exact same time. And you guys who took uh, Jeff, right? Jeff's class. Uh, yesterday, we're going to work with uh, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and then you decided that it wasn't good, and uh, I've never made it either. And one of my customers called up and said, hey, you know, Cinnamon Toast Crunch is great. So we're going to start off with Cinnamon Cro uh, Toast cinnamon toast Crunch and see how it works, and uh, we'll see if it's any good. Um, I think my way will work, but uh, if you've watched the videos, you'll see that um, we have some more chairs over there if you need to unfold them and put them anywhere you like. Morning. Marilyn. Yeah, good morning. Hurry up. Um, I told you 9 o'clock. <laughs> uh, I tend to experiment with things, uh, which sometimes has disastrous effects, but I think that's part of an ice cream parlor or any business, ices, uh, dairy-free, anything. You want to experiment and try new things. It doesn't mean you're going to put them into your rep repertoire. So what Jeff makes today is already guaranteed to be no, fantastic. No, I've never made it. No, well, I mean the other products you're going to make today. Never made them. You know, you've got to catch up. You haven't made them yet because you're here and you're going to make them today. No, no, no. These are new to me. Oh, oh they are? Yes. Okay. New to me. Well, with your track record. I use record, the class for experimenting, too. With your track record, they're probably going to be good. Well, they will be good. Mine are going to be interesting. Well, you know what Sunday is? This Sunday? Yes. What? The opening of Sharknado 6. Oh, we're going to bring back Sharknado? Every year, another one. This is Sharknado 6. All right. So it was six years ago you made that uh, goofy ice cream. Yes. We won't go into that right now. All right. That did not work. The lawsuits were terrible. <laughs> um, anyway, so we'll get started. Jack, you ready? Ready to go. Oh, okay. Jack, am I on? You are on. Hey. <laughs> uh, of course, we're taping this, so uh, that's why we do an introduction. Hi, I'm Steve Thompson. I'm president of Emory Thompson Machine, and this is our continuing series 
of Make It Fresh, where uh, Jeff Markow and I are going to make uh, fresh, different products, ice cream, ices, gelato, uh, sherbet, yogurt, dairy-free. Uh, and yogurt? we're going to, we're not going to do yogurt no. today. And a lot of, uh, we're going to answer a lot of questions and uh, try to, you know, help you out going towards your business. I wanted to show you something before we start. This just came in yesterday, and these come in unsolicited, and I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but this is a note from uh, Utter Delights Ice Cream. And Utter Delights Ice Cream wrote a short note, said, one year ago we took the class at Emory Thompson. Thanks, Steve. And it's from uh, Kim McAndrew and Bob Jones. So I got the exact and same note, and it said, one year ago we took your boot camp. Wow. Same picture, same note. So they, they took both our courses. Yes. So what they won was the Golden Scoop Ice Cream Festival People's Choice Award first place. Can you see that, Jack? Yes, sir. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'd what like to have that golden gold scoop. I'd like award? to have that golden scoop, wouldn't you? You know, they we'll gave that, that away to the to dog owners too. <laughs> so just like I'm going to ignore him, just like uh, Jeff, who came in here and sat in the back of the class. And, and came up with the classic comment. He said, if that idiot Steve Thompson can make all this, imagine what I could do. And that was the start, that was the start of his business. I didn't use the word idiot. Oh, that's okay. It's so, much more severe. No. I'm going to start off with something uh, that I've never made before. But every, and I don't eat cereal, but everybody tells me that cinnamon toast crunch cereal is excellent and that it makes a good ice cream. I know Jeff's class yesterday was starting to experiment with it, but they didn't follow through. So we'll see how it goes today. It may be a winner and may be a bomb, but we'll find out. And uh, it's very simple. Uh, it's just going to be two ingredients, cinnamon toast crunch and vanilla extract and the dairy mix. I'm going to go get the dairy mix. I'll be right back. Okay, you can keep you them might, entertained. You might grab some cinnamon. Only if, if you we, see it up there. Okay, we thought we might put a little more Do, in. I don't even know if we have it up there, Jeff. Otherwise, I've got uh, onion powder. That'll work. This is a dairy blend that came out of the cow yesterday afternoon around 4 o'clock. From the moo to you. From the, yes, uh, from uh, utter to utter delight. How's that? Um, and this is a blend of milk, cream, sugar, and skim milk. Uh, skim milk is what I call the magic ingredient. It's actually heavy cream with all the fat removed. So it adds a lot more body to the ice cream uh, without adding additional uh, fat or liquid. So it's milk, cream, sugar, skim milk powder. And this is all blended up uh, by a local dairy, and they're all over the United States, and in many places in the world it's easy to get. And uh, it's all put together, it's pasteurized, it's homogenized, and then put in these plastic bags, um, BHP uh, safe, and um, it's delivered to us overnight, and so it's about as fresh as you can get. Um, five, right? Uh, five quarts? Yeah, five's good. I think I wrote on the formula six. Uh, the alternative is um, something that comes out of Italy, uh, which has a, uh, more sky miles than I'll ever have. This is a, a powdered version of this dairy blend. And there are no cows. There's, cattle, there's beef cows in Italy, but there's really no dairy cattle. And uh, the dairy cows are in Argentina on the Pampas, and uh, the cows are milked on the Pampas, and then the product, uh, the, the milk, uh, the cream and all, uh, is sent through a machine called a spade, uh, spray dryer invented by a family friend of mine, Henningsen Foods, way long ago. And so they turn this into a powder, they ship it by the boatload over to Italy, where they put it in these nice foil bags, ship it to the port of Elizabeth, and then ship it to you in Iowa. So this thing has traveled a long way, uh, and it's a powder compared to this that traveled maybe 20 miles from the cow to uh, Emory Thompson. So which one's fresher? Who makes the better gelato in the world? Americans do, because we have access to fresh dairy products. This is a powder. The only time we use powders uh, here or anywhere is um, we're in Florida, if you didn't know. And uh, we get hurricanes, and the power goes out for four or five days. 
And so we have uh, powdered milk that we all keep in our hurricane closet. So when the power's out, the refrigeration's off, we can have some milk in our coffee. This is a last ditch, desperate uh, desire to have milk in your coffee as opposed to fresh products. So I have always contended that uh, Americans make the best ice cream in the world because we're using, that's good, because we're using fresh product. Uh, it's only a day old. It does have a shelf life. It has a shelf life liquid of about two to three weeks, and um, it's very easy to use. So we're just going to pour this. I'm going to use the 12-quart machine. Uh, you want to do it? Oh, no. I'll do it. Okay. Thank you. And we've already sanitized the machine and gotten it all ready before you came, and I'll show that all to you a little later in the program, but uh, I know you're hungry for breakfast, and so let's make some breakfast. Whoops. Whoops is not a good word. I just put that towel there. I know. I, I got distracted. I was looking over my shoulder. See, you lose focus for an instant. And you got trouble. Yeah, yeah, you do. He you put got... it all over the floor yesterday because he lost focus like that. <laughs> you know, hey, we're not fighter pilots. I don't think it matters that much. Oh, it matters. Okay. So my dairy blend is in there. I'm just going to wipe this down a little for Jeff for later. And I'm going to start it up. Um, my infinite overrun is uh, something I invented 14 years ago now. And um, it's allows you to vary the speed of the drive without losing the pulling power of it. Normally, if you uh, dim down these lights, say to 20 watts, uh, you've robbed the, the light bulb of all that power. It's only a 20 watt bulb. If you dim down a machine, a motor, uh, you wouldn't have enough strength. The three horsepower motor would now be a quarter horse and wouldn't be strong enough to pull through. With my invention, the uh, power stays the same throughout the spectrum. So I have different choices on here. I have about 10 different products that I've picked. I also have a manual up and down uh, that you can vary it if you want. So I'm just going to go to Super Premium, which is going to be a little less air content than uh, homemade, and hit Start, get it running, turn on the refrigeration, and we're going. Uh, you want to put these in before you turn on the refrigeration? No. No? Okay. I don't. You want to put them in now, though, right? In a, in a minute. I'm going to put the vanilla in first so I don't forget. I tend to forget the vanilla. Um, anybody from Jeff's class remember how to use how much vanilla? One ounce. One ounce to what? Per quart. Per quart. We put five quarts of mix six. in. We put six quarts of mix in. So we're going to put in six ounces of vanilla. about $80. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That goes in. Everything's freezing. Now I'm going to start adding uh, the cookies or the, uh, the crunch cereal. I don't know how this is going to be to pour. I don't try this with any other batch freezer on the market. They'll void your warranty for putting anything into it. They're just not strong enough. Now, we could also throw some bananas in at this point if you wanted. That would be interesting. Uh, you might even throw some chocolate chips in if you like. I'm going to save most of these for when it comes out. So don't let me forget. And that's how easy it is to make ice cream. Uh, well, that, hmm? we don't know yet. Well, it's going to be ice cream no matter what. That's true. And this is going to run for about eight minutes. And um, Okay, that's good. Any questions so far? Yes. This mix has some vanilla yeah. in it. The question was uh, asking about the mix. Does it have vanilla in it or not? Um, so the, some of the lower level fat ice creams like we're using, we're using a 10%, has vanilla in it. But the dairy is a dairy. Their business is cows and milk. It's not vanilla. 
So they're going to put the minimal amount of vanilla into it that they can get away with and still call it vanilla. So I add more vanilla. I subscribe to Jeff's method, uh, and I put in uh, a, a large amount of vanilla. One ounce per quart is a lot of, of vanilla, and this is a, a two-fold vanilla. Um, so it's a tremendous amount. But I have one attitude towards making ice cream, and that is if I hand you a pale pink ice cream, and you say, oh, that's delicious, what is it? And you can't tell that it's red raspberry instead of strawberry, uh, I, I failed at making ice cream. I want the vanilla flavor to be really predominant uh, because it's gonna go well with this particular uh, uh, cereal. If I was using Count Chocula, I probably wouldn't use uh, vanilla because the predominant flavor is gonna be chocolate and I'd be wasting my money putting vanilla in. So uh, it's, it's a great product. So even though the product says vanilla, uh, I'm adding more. Now Jeff, along this same line, asked me for the next class to bring in some chocolate mix. And that'll be fine, except same thing. They're a dairy. They specialize in cows. They don't specialize in chocolate. Uh, Jeff uses fantastic chocolates uh, from different sources. One of them is Gia Giadelli. And uh, I'm going to recommend to him that if he wants to make a great chocolate ice cream, don't buy a chocolate mix from a dairy. Buy the plain mix and add your own specialty chocolate. Chocolate is so subjective. Uh, I, my wife likes 85% uh, cocoa, which if, if you bite it, it tastes like chalk. It's, it's absolutely horrible. Uh, I think uh, M&M's and Hershey bars are the be-all be and end-all of, of chocolate. So there's a wide spectrum of what people like, and I think Jeff will make a better ice cream. Uh, my suggestion, if he doesn't use a chocolate mix, but actually uses uh, a white mix and uh, adds the chocolate to it. Yes? Uh, the question is about the two-fold. Uh, we have to repeat the questions because the camera can't hear them. Uh, the question is about uh, two-fold vanilla and, um, and what was the other part of extract. it? Extract. And, uh, and the extract. Pure vanilla. Um, pure vanilla. Where'd my bottle go? Right here. Oh, thanks. It's, it's, it's a nasty little thing that's going on with vanilla. Uh, and so let me backtrack while we have a little bit of time. Um, back in the, when was it? 70s or 80s? I guess it was the 80s. Um, and by the way, if someone says that they remember the, uh, if, that they grew up in the 60s uh, and they remember this and that, they're lying because anybody from the 60s doesn't remember it. But the 80s, and uh, so we had uh, Colombia and other uh, countries that were growing coffee beans say, oh, the weather's terrible, it's just ruined the crop, and the price quadrupled. And uh, whether it was true or not, we don't think it was, because Americans reacted by uh, making uh, Louisiana coffee, which is where you add chicory to the coffee to extend it. And so the consumption of uh, uh, the avoca beans from Colombia went way, way down. And guess what? The next year, the price went way, way down. Well, the same thing has happened to vanilla. Uh, they have claimed now for three or four years, this is not the manufacturer, this is the source, uh, Mad Madagascar uh, vanilla. Uh, they are claiming that the weather has been so horrible that the orchids can't grow, and vanilla comes from orchids. Um, that it's raised the price. Well, the price has gone from $60 a gallon to about $540 a gallon. And the only way that price is coming down is if we Americans find different ways, because we're the biggest consumer in the world, if we find different ways to use vanilla in a great taste. And or this comes sources. And yeah, if you can find different sources, they're hard to do. Uh, Lockhead Vanilla is, is one of my favorite companies. And so they came out with, uh, they have their pure vanilla at $560 a gallon. They have this one, which is called Flavor 103A, and you can pick this up on my website. Um, and it is a, uh, what do they call it, all natural vanilla. Now, I don't know the, exactly the terminology between all natural and pure, but this is $100 a gallon. And this is way better than vanillin, which is synthetic. So I'm still using an all-natural vanilla in my ice cream, getting a great taste, and I've cut the, the cost by uh, five times. But you'll see that price come down. As people get frustrated with uh, the cost of things, uh, other sources come in, innovation comes in, we will have lower prices. Uh, we're not going to be held hostage forever. Uh, I keep checking this just to see the texture. And um, J 
Jeff and I pull ice cream at different textures. It doesn't matter uh, how you pull it. It's uh, what you want. I'm going to take a look. And I'm just going to I'll stand over here for this camera. Um, open it and close it. And it's still oozing down a little bit. I want it. I'm going to add them as it comes out. Uh, I like it so that uh, I can open the gate and close it quickly, just up, down, and it cuts off like a knife went through it. The number one thing I hear from new customers, and we have over 37,000 of them in 171 countries, um, last week alone I uh, solved uh, 11 machine problems around the world. 11's not much out of 37,000. And they were all solved in less than uh, two minutes because the customer was freezing the product too stiff. They just got the machine, they've seen soft ice cream cones, which is a small diameter barrel, and you pull out the cone, they thought, oh, this is gonna be like soft ice cream. This is a big diameter barrel. If we pulled it out that stiff, it would get hung up in the machine because it's all frozen. So this is gonna come out in a semi-soft state. How do you like that compared to how you do it? Jeff pulls, softer, pulls out sooner than I do. That's ready. That's ready, okay. So it, for me, for Jeff, it's ready. So and it isn't going to make any difference in the texture or the freezing time whatsoever. So I'm going to go with Jeff. I'm go going to on take the other side, and I'll uh, throw these in. Unless you want to do it, I can do it. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to add. I have my flavor identity for every particle of dairy. There is now a particle of cereal next to it that's been ground up. But we also eat with us. So if you're blindfolded and you taste it, you say, yeah, yeah, that's, that's cereal ice cream. Uh, but you can't see the cereal. And we eat with our eyes. So I'm going to have the fruit or flavor identity by shaking in the pieces. I'm going to open up this part way and just shake them in. Now I'm going to stop here and just mix it a little bit. So I could have gotten this ice cream out in 35 seconds, but I wanted to take a little longer to add these. And I'll just roll that over a little bit. By the way, this is a uh, adjustable shelf, so I can do everything from, come on in, have a seat. I can do everything from uh, uh, pint containers up to pans, up to two and a half and three gallon tubs. This is the only scoop we have. Oh, uh, we don't have a spade or something? Yeah. Okay. I think it's going to be good. Now, I have a little bit of ice cream left in there. I'm just going to up the speed to push out the last bit. Now one last thing about just topping off the tub, because I'm going to multitask here and tell you all sorts of stuff. Um, there's my tub. Looks beautiful. Everybody see that? Um, if you were making Oreo mm -hmm. cookie ice cream, um, you would have at the bottom of the tub, because I would take the cookies and break them into, you know, between my thumbs, half the, one bag in the machine, one bag as it's coming out. Um, I'm going to be end, up, end up with cookie dust, Oreo cookie, cookie dust. Well, being a New Yorker, I'll warn you that you don't then take what's left and pour it on top of the tub. Because a New Yorker looks at it and says, that's a pile of dirt. You know, that's dust, that's dirt. Uh, and we know it isn't, but it doesn't look as appealing as you think it would. This is appealing um, that it's got all the pieces in it, that, you know, people can actually see what it is. So come on up. And we'll have you try this, and we'll see if it worked. 
And, and, don't, and give me an honest answer. It won't hurt my feelings. You just will never be invited back. There's spoons here. So help yourself to a spoon. I can hear Sammy wants some. Yeah. Just at that point, emergency has been calling. You were discussing the um, the cream. I called my local farmers, and they keep telling me that they have a soft syrup mix. Is that the same thing? Because they're saying it has vanilla in it and some other stuff in it. It'll work. So it will yeah. work. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Where in the country are you? Louisiana. Okay. Um, in the, see. Near uh, New Orleans. I think everybody heard the question. It was about um, uh, that her dairy has soft serve mix available. Depends on the fat content. We want it up around 10%. If it's down around 4 we don't want it. Um, the federal government says if you want to call this stuff ice cream, it's got to be 10% or higher. In New York, uh, we put ho- we're responsible for haagen and Ben and & Jerry, Breyers, Bluebell, Hershey, just everybody you can imagine uh, all started as a family business. And... Um, in New York, if, if you were selling 14% ice cream mix, haagen is 16, by the way. If you were selling 14, I'm going to sell 16, just so for bragging rights, just so I can say I'm the richest ice cream uh, in all of New York. Down here in Florida, I come down here uh, 13 years ago, and ice cream parlors are not as big a volume uh, business as uh, they were up north. And they're all run by us Yankees. And so I looked into it and said, what's wrong? It can't be just because it's Northerners running it. Uh, oh, and the sure problem was, like in this heat and this humidity, the body just cannot tolerate a 16% butterfat ice cream. Uh, when you buy haagen you take it home, you're having a small portion uh, for dinner. And then you're having another little scoop of it at 11 o'clock at night. You pick at it. But in an ice cream parlor, if you're given a nice big portion like Jeff serves and it's 16% butterfat, and you go out in 95 degree heat and 100% humidity, you're going to sweat, it's going to give you a stomach ache, and your reaction is going to be not, oh, the fat content made me feel ill, it's going to be, oh, Steve Thompson's ice cream made me feel awful, therefore I'm not going back to Steve Thompson's ice cream parlor. So we dropped the fat content all the way down to the federal minimum. This is smooth and creamy, I think you'll agree to that. And it is only 10% fat. It's the bottom of the barrel percentage-wise, according to the Food and Drug Administration. And for this environment, it makes a great ice cream. So for the lady in Louisiana, hot and humid. Uh, South Carolina, uh, unbelievably hot and humid. Uh, The lower fat contents make sense. You go up into Ohio, um, you go up into Wisconsin, the fat contents are going to go up. Yes, sir. You had a question? No? He just like, oh, I I thought it was you were raising your spoon. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. So it's got the seal of approval from Jeff, so I guess we're good. Uh, I'll start rinsing out your machine and turn the floor over to you. Okay. You don't mind that I do that, do you? That's great. we got to use it. Yeah, my throw them out. So Jeff That's will be good, with you it? in a second. It, actually, we might create a new food group, breakfast ice cream. There we go. Works for me. It's just like cereal, only you'll get fat. 